Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how you can create this animation in Blender. We are going to create it by using geometry nodes and the flip fluids add-on. You can find a link to the add-on in the description. So let's get started. First let's delete everything and make sure that you have the flip fluids add-on enabled of course and also you need the A and T landscape add-on and the bool tool add-on. Now if you add something you see that we have this option right here. Let's open this and I'm going to choose Canyon. You can of course choose whatever you like and we don't need to change anything here. Now let's duplicate this and call this one landscape circle. You'll see why in just a moment. And hide the one that we copied in the final render. If you don't have this option here you can just go up here and enable it. Now let's also hide it in the viewport. Hit shift A, add a cylinder, duplicate it, go into top view and scale it down by pressing Ctrl. I mean S of course and then Ctrl S Z to scale it on the Z and shift select the first cylinder. Now press N and go to edit and under this drop down here on difference. And now let's go into edit mode, Ctrl I and scale it on the X and Y by hitting S shift Z. Now let's go back into object mode and duplicate this because we'll need it later again and hide it everywhere. Now select the cylinder and the landscape circle and again hit difference and now we have this. Now let's animate the second landscape again and select it. Hit slash on the numpad. Go into edit mode and Top view, deselect everything, press C, and now we've got this circle select tool, or whatever it's called, <laughs> and select this area here. Now press right click, and shift D, P, selection. Now let's go back to object mode and call this flow. Go to the physics properties and flip fluid, so force field, and set it to surface force. Set the strength to minus 15. And now let's also select the other two landscapes and flip fluids, obstacle, and uh, again for this one. Now, as you can see, making this object an obstacle for some reason turned this back on so let's turn it off again now let's hit slash on the numpad again and add a cube scale it down on the side like this and now let's make that a domain you can leave the resolution at 65, but you can of course change it if you want. But I think it fits perfectly for the simulation. Now we need to add three more cubes. For that let's hide this landscape. Go into top view, add a cube and scale it down. And move it to somewhere around here so that it doesn't intersect with the plane in any way. Move it up. And also make sure that it is within the domain. I'm going to move it here. Flip fluid and make it an inflow. Now let's go into side view and add two more cubes. Move this one over here. 
and flip through it, make it an outflow. By the way, let's call this one outflow and this one inflow. Now duplicate the outflow and move it over here. Like this. Now let's unhide this landscape again and select it. Go into edit mode and press A to select everything and E to extrude it down. If we don't extrude it, the fluid will glitch through the mesh. I don't know why it happens, it's not supposed to, but well. Now let's go back to object mode. I recommend that you save if you haven't already. And now let's select the domain and hit bake. The cool thing about the flip fluids atom is that you can still work on the scene while it is baking. Just don't change anything about the obstacles for example, except for shaders of course, you can change that because it won't affect, it won't affect the fluid. And now if we go forward in the timeline, we can already see what it has baked. And this is looking good so far. Now let's hit Shift A and add a plane. We are going to use that for the geometry nodes. Now let's hide this again. And you can also hide the domain and the outflow if you like. I'm also going to hide this and the inflow and the flow object. Now let's select the fluid, go to the modifiers and select the boolean modifier. Now select the cylinder and as you can see it will now cut this off here but the fluid will still work. Now let's unite this landscape here and select it and duplicate it. Hide this one again. Select the duplicated one and go to the edit mode and delete what we've excluded. Now go back to object mode and also add a boolean modifier and select the cylinder. Now let's hide it, hide this and the fluid and go to geometry nodes, select the plane and press new. Delete the group input and drag the fluid surface and the, the landscape that we duplicated again in the in here. Now let's add a realize instant source node. Connect it to the geometry here. Move this over. Now set material. Duplicate it and connect it here. And we also need a joint geometry node. Connect them both here. Now connect the geometry. Now we need to set this to relative and add instance on points. Duplicate it up here. Now add a cube. Set the scale to 0 0.0075 and connect that to the instance. And now we have this. Also connect it up here. Now we need a transform node. Duplicate it again. And for the fluid, let's set the set posi position to 0 0.02, so that it does not intersect with the with the ground. Now let's drag this up here, go to the timeline, and make sure you're in frame one. And, and now let's hit play.
and as you can see it works just as we want it to. Now as you can see the simulation has finished baking but I decided that I want the animation to be 500 frames so you can just change that here and click on resume back. And I noticed that I didn't rename the cube to the domain. Now if we go back one frame the fluid should be back and it is. Now let's select the plane again and go to frame 15. And before we change anything here let's position the camera. So press free to go into side view and let's add an empty and now add a camera Control alt 0 to go into camera view and G set set to move it like this and now shift select the empty and Control p now we can control the rotation and everything with the empty so let's rotate it on the y axis like this now let's select the plane again and uh, as you can see I have to go forward to see where the float is. So let's move it up on the set like this. Go to frame 15 and now keyframe the, okay, uh, the transformation and now let's go to frame 50 Oh, not 5, 50. And set it back to 0 0.02. And keyframe it again. Now let's do the same for the ground. Go back to frame 15. And let's move it down. Like this. Keyframe it. And go to frame 50 and just set it to zero again. Now let's create the materials. I'm going to create two materials for this. Now set the materials here. Now let's go to the shading workspace and we can close these windows here. Go to rendered view and I'm going to use cycles and for the world properties let's use the sky texture set the air dust and the zone to 1.545 and let's make it transparent go up here under film check transparent and now let's go into camera view now we need to change something here again I forgot it earlier by the way, I'm also going to set the sun elevation. <laughs> now let's change to material 001 for the fluid. Delete the principal BSDF and add a glass shader. Control shift to connect it to the surface and simply make it blue. Now let's go to material 002 and delete the principal BSDF and Control T if you have the node ring add on installed connected to the surface add a math node and set it to subtract I set it to 2.63 uh, and connect the generated to the vector now let's add a color ramp make the black something more brownish like like this let's turn the overlays off now let's add another one of these controllers and make it red and now let's make this one green now let's add a glass BSDF 
And the last thing that we need to do for the shader is to set the set to 21. And as you can see this gives us this height map like thing or whatever you call it. And you can control that with the value here. Now let's go back to layout mode and into camera view. Select the empty, go back to frame 1, press I and keyframe the rotation, go to the last frame and keyframe the set, I mean set it to 360 and keyframe it. By the way, don't forget to parent the empty that we are using for the focus to this empty as well. So let's do that. Shift click on it and control P, object. And now it should move along with it, which it does. So this is what it looks like so far. I'm also going to add depth of field. So let's add another empty tree and move it on the X. Move it to somewhere, somewhere around here. And move it up a little, like this. So that it is on the ground basically. Go back into camera view, select the camera and enable depth of field and type in empty. Select the second empty and I'm going to set the f-stop to 1.5. And now let's go to the upper properties and select an output folder. I'm going to choose this one and just create a new folder, call it renders. And now give the files a name. If you put an underscore after it, it will automatically assign a number to the frame. I'm going to render it into JPEG so it won't be truly transparent. To be, to have it actually transparent, you'll need to run it into a PNG, but I am going to use JPEG because the file size is smaller. For the render settings, I'm going to leave it at 128, and I also enabled denoise, and I recommend that you use optics, but you can only use it if you have an NVIDIA GPU. I'm also going to do some compositing. If you don't see these options here, you can enable denoising de data and just add this denoise node and set it to accurate. Now let's see if the baking has finished, and it has. You can also render the animation while it is still baking. The problem with that is that it sometimes skips a few frames, for example. There is a fix for that, but I'm not quite sure how to do that. Now let's make sure that everything is disabled in the renders, except for the empties and the plane. These ones are enabled, but that's okay because the collection is disabled, which they are contained in. And everything else is disabled as well. So I'm going to render this now, and once it's finished, I'm going to show you how to compile the, the separate images into a video. As you can see, now it has finished rendering, so let's close this window and click on the plus sign here, video editing, go to video editing, make sure you are on frame 1, hover over the file path and press Ctrl C, now here shift A and image sequence. Paste it in here and remove the name and now if the images aren't arranged in order for some reason, just go here and sort by name or extension or whatever and press A, enter. And now we have all the images in here. So now let's go to the file format, FFmpeg video, and for encoding choose MPEG4. For the upper quality set it to high quality and Let's hit render. So that's it with the tutorial. If you liked it, please press like. If you didn't, press dislike.
and remember to check out the links in the description. I'll see you next time.